Yes, yeah, so here at um, the Museum of, uh, of Modern Art, um, within the context of uh, the contemporary and modern art perspective in a global age or CIMAP initiative, um, I would like to address the time and space of the exhibition as related to contemporary Caribbean spatial practices, both artistic and curatorial. Much as I do not like to define myself in the negative, I should say that I am neither a Caribbeanist nor an academic for that matter, and present myself to you here primarily as a practicing contemporary art curator interested in uh, special practices. Um, and so my presentation is very much in keeping with an earlier paper I delivered last uh, year. Um, I'll Tilting Axis. Um, it's a roving uh, Caribbean discursive platform uh, that's instrumental really in bringing uh, the people of the Caribbean together uh, to share discourses and practices. This year it took place in Santo Domingo and Iberia had the pleasure to attend it. Um, and my paper is also, so that paper already was very much looking at uh, Caribbean spatial practices and trying to see if there was anything specific to um, aesthetic diasporic practices that could inform the way in which we curators in turn uh, present uh, their work in a public uh, forum. Uh, and my presentation is also very much indebted, for genealogies are tremendously important, as we know, to a set of colleagues, art historians, art critics, and uh, an artist, among whom uh, Krista Thompson, who was my collaborator for the exhibition en masse, Carnival and Performance Art of the Caribbean, uh, artist, art critic, mentor, um, uh, Christopher Cozier of uh, Alice Yard, and one of the earlier um, theorists, of mass masquerade carnival as per the Trinidadian colloquium and um, also um, the artist um, Trinidad born uh, Japan based Marlon Griffiths and last but not least um, uh, Gia Wolf not of the Caribbean uh, but doing research on Brazil and specifically on the urban dimension, temporary as it is, of uh, uh, Brazil, uh, well, Rio's um, uh, carnival. Um, so these are my um, thinking partners uh, in my work and, and very much so uh, for this uh, presentation um, today. Um, and so, uh, of course, you know, this paper is um, in express response to uh, the seminar's address to the, on the topic of performing identities, self-fashioning in visual culture and architecture, with a focus, as the brief indicated, in forms of resistance to national narratives, counter modes of identity to community, diaspora and nation, and tensions within uh, between local art histories and national narratives, as well as, and maybe more importantly to me, diasporic frameworks of actualization. At a historical juncture in which displacement has become central to a global experience. But I will not so much speak about performing identities as much as I will look at the spaces where these identities can be performed. And uh, lastly, about um, the conference brief, um, as a black Atlantic framework of analysis has largely dismissed the violence of the notion of nation onto an African diasporic experience, I will not so much discuss consideration of nationhood, but focus instead on the formation of resistance spaces of uh, spatial infrastructures of fugitivity within African diasporic spatial practices with a view to investigating their possible adaptability to global spaces of diasporization. In, and so a lot of the, um, the visuals are um, excerpted from past curatorial projects or um, specific artists. They're all hopefully adequately labeled so that you can refer back to their various authors uh, as need be. In measures of an exhibition, architecture curator Carson Chan argues that space, not art, is the curator's primary material. To Chan, the current condition in exhibition-making practice, according to which, 
quote, large-scale exhibitions have become emptied of their function as an effective survey of the latest artistic ideas, digital communication has supplanted the large-scale exhibition in this role, and furthermore, the internet is becoming a site in which art is not only represented, but actualized and validated, unquote. So for him, this set of condition presents for exhibition makers and curators both a need and an opportunity to reposition space rather than the artwork as the primary material in exhibition making. Indeed, according to Chan, if art can be apprehended, if not experienced, apart from materiality, the physical exhibition's raison d'être must be conceived of as an experience structured around the exigencies of tangible space. Applied to the context of African diaspora spatial practices, Chan's exhortation to exhibition makers to pay attention to the material reality and the physical condition of exhibition making practices endangered by both the dematerialization of the art object and the digitalization of the artistic experience, Dovotel's art historian Krista Thompson's insistent demand in how to install art as a Caribbeanist for the consideration of a Caribbeanist perspective in curating Caribbean art informed by an appreciation of the particulars of African diasporic aesthetic practices. In this essay, Thompson elaborates from Helen Molesworth's like demand for a feminist perspective in how to install art as a feminist. In it, Molesworth um, says, um, or, or rather advocates to think through the translation of new feminist discursive formations into the spatial logic and requirements of the museum. Picking up where uh, Ellen Mosworth uh, leaves off, Thompson seeks to uncover, as related to uh, the field of Caribbean art, what are some of the aesthetic practices and structures of visuality in the Caribbean region that influence Caribbean art and how these structures of visualities may inform our understanding of and our curatorial approach to it. Sounds pretty basic, and yet. Um, Forward. Both Chan and Thompson's formulations are differently instrumental in shedding light upon my concurrent, and not subsequent, decade-long elaboration of a Caribbean curatorial discourse and practice, or maybe more modestly and maybe more accurately, of the formation of a curatorial discourse and practice informed by a Caribbean historical frame of special references. Might this Caribbean special reference upon which to base curatorial coordinates be located in the traditional spaces of the backyard or the mass camp or the dance hall, spaces of vernacular modernism in the words of Kingston-based cultural critic Annie Paul, herself quoting from Homi Baba's notion of vernacular modernism and Kabina Mercer's notion of cosmopolitan modernism. And if not these traditional spaces, where and how else? And this is the way in which this is a continuation of a set of uh, questions that were posed at Tilting Axis last year in Grand Cayman, uh, where the paper upon which I'm building this one today uh, was within a panel titled The Spaces of the Exhibition, Traditional and Non-Traditional. And of course, within a, a Caribbeanist uh, perspective, um, traditional spaces for exhibiting are, of course, not the museum. And instead, it is rather a non-traditional space within which uh, cultural practices uh, occur. The traditional spaces would indeed be the backyard or the mass camp, i.e. the carnival warehouse, or of course the dance hall, for instance. Uh, so uh, what might be the third space in relationship to the Du Boisan characterization of the Atlant African diasporic experience through constant resistance to second sites? So what might be the third space for the second sites that continue to be constitutive of African diasporic subject formation uh, in the way in which um, this set of, of conditions of an African diasporic subjectivity are repurposed by Krista Thompson in her call for an African diaspora art history. I trust that um, the latter reference to African diasporic racial othering and specular subjections to the tropes of white hegemonic visuality transposed to an art historical analysis provides sufficient evidence to the political imperative of carving out a third space for Caribbean aesthetic practices, just as the resurgence 
or rather the increased media attention to the lethal violence inflicted upon black bodies has served as a catalyst for the Movement for Black Lives urgent creation of safe spaces for people of African descent in the United States. Um, and so, again, I wonder what are and how have the resistant spatial practices of the African diaspora formed and how do they fare within the museum's exhibitionary complex? And here to illustrate this point, I um, compare and contrast um, to, well, the same work by uh, Marlon Griffiths, the um, Japan-based Trinidad-born artist of which I spoke earlier, who in the case of the slide in the upper left corner of the screen um, led a uh, performance at the dawn of Carnival in Trinidad back in 2014 entitled Position and Power, um, of course within the public space of the street and then the way in which it was reconfigured by Krista and myself in an exhibition designed by Gia Wolf, somehow um, following a kind of circumambulatory uh, a principle, and yet um, somehow deadening the various artifacts uh, that had been presented otherwise in a live uh, fashion. Um, and it's important for me also, uh, so to compare this uh, uh, Caribbeanist uh, or these Caribbean uh, aesthetic practices and the various cultural modes through which they can be made available to a, 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 a wider or maybe non-Caribbean audience within a museum context, to um, safe space formation by African American artists within uh, the museum, well, within and without the museum sanctum itself. And so I was very um, uh, interested in the way in which artists from uh, Colleen Smith to uh, Simone Lee in recent uh, um, exhibitions, uh, be it the Whitney Banyal in the case of the former, or um, the, uh, the new museum in the case of the latter, uh, staged uh, events in and out of the museum, trying to at once bring visibility, uh, uh, but also deploy um, the agency of uh, uh, black bodies. Um, and so I believe that we have to shift, uh, and I think that both my colleagues would agree, from the field of visuality to the field of performativity, or maybe rather to pay attention to both in combination in order to understand how the specialization of resistance has historically taken place within African diaspora and Caribbean artistic practices uh, specifically. Um, and so I'm making a bit of a detour. Um, here uh, to, yet again, the work of uh, uh, Marlon Griffiths in the way in which uh, his production has been uh, uh, studied by Krista and put into motion uh, by myself in my curatorial work. Um, so his work, in my view, provides ample examples of forms of specializations of resistance in the dual violence of visuality and performativity. One of the few proponents of mass, i.e. Um, the artistic dimension of Carnival, uh, of his generation, he was born in 1976, um, Griffiths has refined techniques for observing the unseen and the invisible as a primary modus operandi. As have many other Caribbean artists, John Biddle, Hugh Locke are only but a few uh, we could think of. And the way in which um, they have arrived at these uh, you know, forms of unseeing, um, uh, for instance, cut out techniques reminiscent of the lace work customary to wooden and metallic decorative patterns in Caribbean colonial architecture, form a negative space that escapes preemption, just like the shadows created from light cast through them, carve orifices, likewise evading tangible capture. But bring these visual techniques uh, of spatial escape to bear upon Griffith's uh, hallmark processional performance work here within the context of uh, Junkanoo, which is the um, end of the year um, street masquerade that takes place um, well in Nassau. Um, and you begin to gain full awareness of the fugitive effect motion conspires to produce for what I hope can begin to be considered as a unique Caribbean spatial ontology. I quote here uh, Christopher Cozier, exhibitions without walls and in the public domain advocate another way or mode of curatorship. 
indeed, these are modes of curatorial practice that are not only um, that not only transform the more conventional spaces in which Caribbean art is displayed, but through a consideration of artistic practices historically, redefine the meaning of the art object and how it is experienced. They place an emphasis on the body as an art object, on the multisensorial movement of the object in three-dimensional space, on the performative as an ephemeral form of art production. And so, um, and these were a mix of both the words of Christopher Cozier uh, and of Krista Thompson and um, her use of both his um, uh, words as one of the earlier critic of the form and of my uh, curatorial uh, work. And so the outcome of um, our decade-long artist slash curator collaboration, and I refer to Marlon Griffiths here, uh, the formation of processional performance as both an artistic and curatorial mode of display specific to Caribbean art does not only reactivate the memory of historical moments of actual resistance, but it also actualizes resistant spaces that are at the margin of the Western Museum complex and could be at the center of an African diasporic, Caribbean, and more widely, um, maybe a diasporic display uh, complex. Um, and so here, I wanted to introduce you, uh, some of those of you who are familiar with my work uh, would be um, quite knowledgeable about these um, uh, older works. This is indeed 10 years old. Um, but I want to show you uh, the way in which this particular mode of the processional, whether it refers to street masquerading uh, practices or, of course, um, um, builds upon the various processional modes within protest marches, for instance, um, how, again, it has the power of both reactivating the memory of um, events that have occurred formally, but also uh, of actualizing contemporary resistance uh, spaces. And so uh, time and again in my curatorial work, I return to historical moments of resistance as the backdrop against which the processional performance I directed unfolded. And so here, uh, 10 years ago, um, or almost, it was on September 5th, 2008, uh, in Kwangju for the Kwangju Biennial, which this year was under the artistic directorship of Okui and Wezo, um, I looked back at, and I will do a quick, I looked back at, um, sorry, and this is where I begin to uh, mix my papers. Uh, I looked back at the May 18 Democratic uh, Uprising the, uh, of the 1980s, which is the um, single most event responsible for the democratization of South Korea, if you will, uh, Tiananmen Square nine years uh, prior, with, of course, a different set of, of, uh, of um, circumstances. And also um, the events um, which inspired uh, Yong Wu Lee to uh, form uh, the Kwangju Biennale Foundation as um, in order to um, identify Kwangju as a beacon for democracy uh, in, uh, in uh, South Korea. And so um, here, in addition to uh, the very location where, um, uh, well, the event to which the performance referred and the location where it took place, as you can see, it is the very uh, same uh, square or rather roundabout against uh, around which uh, the processional unfolded. But also both the artist Marlon Griffiths and myself, um, strong though we were and still are of our historical Caribbean consciousness, looked back at um, uh, an important uh, event uh, in Trinidad, the Kanbule riots, which took place both in 1881 and 1884, and were essentially um, a protest during the carnival for uh, the, um, the, um, the, the continued existence of the carnival uh, against, of course, the wishes of the British uh, colonial uh, powers at the time. And so the Kanbule riots, as they were known, uh, were instrumental really in establishing carnival as a, uh, a determinant for a free space for the formerly enslaved uh, Trinidadian population of African descent, and later also for the Indian indentured uh, laborers that took their, um, their, their place in uh, plantation uh, uh, labor. Um, this is uh, 
Thank you. Uh, this is a uh, further uh, uh, detail of only uh, of still uh, I'm keeping up with uh, Marlon's work, but there were uh, many more artists, Caribbean and otherwise, but among the Caribbean artists also Mario Benjamin um, and uh, the artist from Brazil, Jabas Lopez and Karen Olivier, who y you know here as uh, an artist living and working in the US, but who is originally from Trinidad and Tobago. Another example, uh, A Walk Into the Night, uh, which I curated for Capo 9, the second and last edition of the Cape Town Biennial. And yet again, it, uh, it built upon um, a significant moment within the history of, uh, uh, of South Africa in the, uh, the dawn of the uh, apartheid era. And this is uh, the forced uh, removals. And so um, the very title of the piece, A Walk in the Night, um, paid homage to uh, a novel by Alex Laguma about the, um, the forced removals of colored population from the city center to the outskirts of town with uh, the consequence of forming what is now known as the townships and really uh, wrecking a vogue the very uh, multicultural communities that existed in the center of, of Cape Town, the population that were then, as they are now, known as uh, colored. Um, and so in addition to uh, the historical reference to um, the forced removal and the uh, symbolic resettlement of uh, these transient uh, uh, carnival uh, practices within the city center, uh, the location yet again mattered. Indeed, uh, this processional took place in the company gardens. So, of course, the history of slavery was also evoked for uh, the company of which uh, the garden, uh, which housed the garden is the Dutch East, East India uh, Company. So there again, there's any numbers of um, special memorial reference, if you will, which resonates strongly uh, locally. Uh, and which otherwise, through the very motion of you know, bodies in space, can uh, uh, confer upon a wider audience the general sense of migration, dispossession, and diaspora. Uh, that really, uh, you know, a formation of a group in motion tends to uh, 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 tends to induce. Um, and I think that is all I have to say for a walk into the night. Um, also that the very uh, performers were members of the quote-unquote colored communities which uh, host these uh, various uh, uh, carnival um, Carnival uh, practices, if you will, uh, knowing that uh, Carnival always has had a, um, in Cape Town an ambivalent uh, history of racial accommodation at once and spatial resistance to white hegemonic power in the struggle for the public occupation of urban space. There's a lot just about that, but I will uh, move on. A close up again of these various. Uh, transient uh, forms, migrant bodies. Um, and the last of these that I wanted to share with you um, uh, took place at uh, Tate Modern in the Turban Hall just about four years ago. And um, this particular project was called Appeal Down Hall. And yet again, through uh, the punning title, uh, Notting Hill Turban Hall, um, the, um, uh, it is the, the, the history of the Notting Hill Carnival uh, that I wanted to, to reference for, as mm, those of you who are interested in Caribbean history globally may know, the Notting Hill Carnival was born in the late 1950s, early 1960s, as a, um, an act of, yet again, I would call it special resistance to um, the extermination of uh, migrant uh, or Caribbean migrants um, at the hands of um, their um, rivals uh, who would not have recognized them necessarily as the uh, former subjects of the queens that they always were. I always like to refer back to um, uh, Stuart Hall, we are here because you were there. Well, um, in, uh, in, in 1959, uh, a horrendous uh, murder 
uh, of an Antiguan um, took place, Castle Kafran, and it is that event that um, uh, determined uh, Claudia uh, Jones, the Trinidadian founder of what became the Nottingham Carnival, to uh, respond by an act of uh, uh, cultural resistance uh, through the celebratory uh, means of, of, of Carnival. And in turn, it is um, another murder, likewise of a Briton of Caribbean descent, this time uh, in 2011, Mark Duggan, uh, event which sparks the uh, London riots of that summer, uh, that Marlon Griffiths uh, um, conceived of his piece, um, No Black in the Union Jack, coincidentally uh, referring to uh, or alluding to uh, Paul Gilroy's uh, work of uh, the same uh, title. Uh, here is actually another uh, slide of another artist of Caribbean descent. Um, that's a Hugh Locke. And I want you to uh, pay attention to the deconstructed canopy of rope, which united the upper and lower levels of the turban hall. For um, you will see other forms of canopies being used uh, in, um, in, in Carnaval in Trinidad. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is twofold, because again, in looking for other spatial references without resorting to what maybe Anomia would refer to as ethno-cultural modes. Well, again, what are the, the, the sets of infrastructural devices that we can um, unfurl in context uh, within which they are not native, if you will. So again, what are the, the, the principles, the organizing principles through which we can begin to conceive of other spaces? And so I'm just, this is just something that I wanted to, uh, for you to pay attention to, because you will see how it was adapted or translated into the context of the Turban Hall from um, works of the Trinidad Carnival that we will see um, next. Um, and so, um, as I said, you know, in, in addition to reactivating uh, the memory of historical moments of resistance, I have hoped also through uh, this work, uh, this curatorial work, which really has as its primary uh, intention, as always is the case of curatorial work, to serve uh, the, in the intentions of the artists themselves, I have hoped to also actualize uh, resistance spaces that may be at the margin of the Western uh, museum uh, complex. Moving on to another terrain, though, here for some uh, theoretical stamina, uh, I turn to uh, Homi Baba uh, and uh, building upon the work of the uh, South African scholar Leora Malsleka in both their recent analysis of William Kentridge's work. Uh, in um, an essay which appeared recently in Art Forum, Homi Baba characterizes the footstep and by extension uh, processional ethics as a symbol of the collective condition of dispossession and diaspora. And he asks, what kind of political movement is the procession? What is its footsteps? If Baba's characterization of Kentridge's procession of the dispossessed as epitomizing conditions of dispossession and diaspora has purchased onto Caribbean processional spatial practices of resistance, his experience of Kentridge's more sweetly plays the dance, here um, pictured in its uh, iteration at Mayan Goodman Gallery in London, uh, his experience of more sweetly plays the dance as a refusal of time and place, or in other words, not the moment and not the direction, might not unanimously apply to what I conceive of as the heterochronotopic space of African diaspora, special practices of resistance through processional uh, performance. And yet, I do find it tremendously useful to um, apply uh, this notion of processional ethics to an increasing body of work in this genre that seems to confirm um, the genre's much older, indeed millenary, purchase onto uh, cultural practices worldwide, and much older, certainly, than the relatively recent advent of the so-called exhibitionary uh, complex. Um, and so, um, 
So building upon, but also departing from uh, uh, Baba's characterization of processional epics, I'd like to argue that heter uh, the, heterochrono the heterochronotopic mode as an always already othered time-space continuum doubles down on temporal and spatial experiences and inscribes within each new step all the many steps that have preceded it in an accretion of time and a repetition of space unique to the cyclical celebrations typical of the Caribbean calendar, from Carnival to Junkanoo to Cropover, and the occasional commemorations such as the Second Lines of New Orleans. Um, this understanding of the heterochronotopic dimension of African diasporic special practices is indebted to Joseph Roach's characterization of the oceanic culture of circumatlantic uh, performance. Uh, as an act of surrogation to ensure social continuity and cultural preservation. In Cities of the Dead, Circumatlantic Performance from 1996, I think one of the uh, earliest um, attempt at uh, um, theorizing uh, a performance uh, in a black Atlantic uh, frame, Roach writes that peoples of the Caribbean Rim are at the heart of an oceanic interculture embodied through performance. But he also reminds us that the idea of circumatlantic cultural exchange does not deny Eurocolonial initiatives their place in history, but it regards the result of those initiatives as the insufficiently acknowledged co-creation of an oceanic interculture. An assessment that is very much in keeping with African diaspora art historians' assertion that African diaspora art history belongs fully in Western art history and is neither a subset or a counter to it. Um, likewise, my phenomenological, always already, combination of Foucault's heterotopia and Bakhtin's chronotop recognizes the dual influences of two archetypal spaces of exception the museum as heterotopia, and the carnival as chronotop. However, in actualizing both concepts into their combined parts, it produces, or it hopes to produce, a third space greater than the sum of each of these two spaces. Indeed, an epistemological shift is afoot within the black Atlantic world between Western European versus African American spatial legacies of artistic display, a shift that is best exemplified in the passage from the medieval wander wandering artwork to the American wordwork. Uh, now, I have to, I know time is up. Uh, if you can uh, give me uh, two more seconds, I will summarize some of the notions that I uh, exposed to you previously. But this is key to me, to shift from uh, the wandering artwork to the roadwork. What is this wandering artwork uh, uh, to which I refer? Uh, for those of you who uh, recently reread, as I have, uh, Tony Bennett's well-known Birth of the Museum, you may recall, um, I think, one of his central essay, uh, which is, well, the Exhibitionary Complex. Um, uh, um, well, it turned into a chapter in the book, but it was also a, a, a separate essay in which uh, he rebukes uh, Douglas Crimp's assertion according to which um, the museum would be a space of confinement. Uh, indeed, Tony Bennett says, well, if indeed the museum was a space of confinement, it would seem to suggest that previously works of art had been wandering through the streets like the shepherd fools in Foucault's Manet and Civilization, to which I respond, yes, indeed, they had. Not only had works of art been wandering through the streets of medieval Europe, but certainly uh, after 1492 on other ships of uh, containment of bodies uh, to be enslaved, uh, the, in the oceanic interculture that was born of the Middle Passage uh, throughout Latin America, certainly in the Caribbean, uh, gave way to a culture, um, the visual vocabulary of which was very much cited within uh, the bodies uh, of its uh, uh, performers. And um, uh, so this is to um, begin in a way where uh, Tony, Baggett, Tony Bennett doesn't really stop but doesn't really even consider an alternative. But also to go back to and to conclude on uh, Caribbean theories of space, um, 
and to shift to uh, this notion of great uh, import uh, to me of the roadwork as it was uh, theorized by uh, Christopher Cozier, him again, to speak specifically about the work of Peter Minshall. And here you can see in uh, one of Peter Minshall's landmark work, River from the early 80s, uh, a canopy. Uh, again, the kinds of you know, a spatial trope that you know, can be used and reused um, as a ways of framing space, but also giving direction to. Um, and so I will conclude here by saying that um, that um, in, in following the locally specific term of road work, which again uh, Minshall coined specifically to refer to the work of Minshall, he simply said, you know, so many uh, of the so many of the artworks we produce take place in the streets, but of course on the road, which yet has a different meaning uh, and as a diasporic purchase, that I decided to call these, these works roadworks. Um, and so, um, you know, so roadworks in a way are to wandering artworks. What mass is to a, a carnival understood from a European standpoint. It is a redirection and a reassignment of the spatial coordinates of African diasporic performance practices on their own terms, literally, metaphorically, and actually speaking. Um, and so, um, uh, to, to, to finish um, by quoting the potent uh, words of Christopher Cozier, he said that um, when works such as uh, these ones, and just as a final slide, uh, of uh, Trinidadian massman Peter Minshall um, passed through uh, the streets of, of Port of Spain, it became clear that the objects and actions that objects and actions could function with equal agency in the social and cultural space and that the arena for creative expression was inherently much wider and he concludes and so do i apart from those who made work that fitted into the expedient justifications of a local art market why had artists chosen and I would say why have curators chosen or allowed their work to be aligned to such a narrow path. Thank you. <laughs>